have a look at the 3D window, the 3D settings and how to set up some cameras. Uh, we're probably going to have to break this down into several different video tutorials because otherwise it's just going to take too long. So firstly, what is 3D? Whatever we build our model out of, 3D objects, columns, walls, doors and windows, we can see in 3D. My preferred way is if we want to see everything, we right click, say show all in 3D. Now, of course, our, when we do that, we're not necessarily going to see everything straight away because our 3D window settings or the, the elements that we see, our layers or layer combination, is dependent on what is in our floor plan or in our elevations and sections. Therefore, we might need to turn things on or off when we're in our window to see what we want to see. In this case, I don't want to see my terrain mesh. So I'm going to go, I'll do it the long way, elements, sorry, Options, Element Attributes, Layer Settings, and I'm going to select and turn on all of my layers, and I'm just going to turn off, I think, the layer called Terrain. And that's going to give me the, the layers that I want for this purpose. So when we're in our 3D window, the, the general ways that we navigate, I'm currently in OpenGL. If your window is working very slowly and it doesn't look smooth when you're trying to navigate, it probably means that you're not in OpenGL and you're in the internal engine. How we change that is View, 3D View Options, and it's down here, OpenGL Internal Engine, or we can go to 3D Window Settings. And then we make sure that we use OpenGL as opposed to internal. Let's just change to internal just quickly so we see what that looks like. Internal can be useful, but it's not as good for navigating the 3D window. You see that when I'm trying to navigate it, it's blocking or it's turning to a wireframe to make it work effective. But ideally, if we want to see smooth surfaces and the correct colors, we're going to use the OpenGL settings. And of course, that gives us a, a preview of our rendered surface material as well. So it's great if we're trying to understand the colors and the shapes and the patterning or textures that we're applying to our model. Now, the way that I'm exploring this model currently is called the Orbit Tool. And the Orbit Tool is down the bottom and it looks a bit like a donut. And when I'm holding down my uh, mouse button, left click, holding it down and then moving my mouse, I can explore the model. I can, I'm zooming in and out at the moment, but I can rotate around it. Now this means that it's centered with the center of the objects that we've selected. So in this case, because there's a bit of a road, that's why it's not keeping the house itself as the center of my object. Now this is pretty good for flying around buildings, and so we're going to be talk about what a fly through or a walk through is later, but it's not fantastic for exploring the interior spaces, and that's why we have an explore tool. And the explore tool is the little person here. Man, woman, let's not be gender biased. And exploring, <coughs> this is the, the commands that we use to explore. So have a look at those and choose whichever ones you want. This is essentially like a first person video game. In this case, how we work, I'm using my mouse to move my head to rotate my view. And then I'm using the keyboard. In this case, I'm going to use the arrows forward to move forward, backwards, so down to move back, left to straight left, right to straight right. And of course, whichever direction I look, that's the direction that is forward. So I can therefore walk around in circles if I really want to. All right, now don't make sure you don't left click while you're doing this because left clicking will finish your exploration and then you have to go back into the mode. So the explore tool helps us to understand all of the intricacies of our model. We can see when the model is incomplete. We can see when there is a intersection, when something is not working well, and we can see all the aspects that we wouldn't normally see in just an elevation or maybe a section. And this allows us to get a much better understanding of what it is. So you see here that this kitchen looks very unmodeled. Uh, there's no benches much. The wall heights aren't quite right. Blah, blah, blah. There's lots of bits that aren't missing. This needs to be turned into a, a truss here. Currently, it's just a big fat composite to make it right in section. So there's still a lot of work that needs to be done in this model, but it's going to be fine for the, the purposes of this project. Great. 
<laughs> so this is wonderful for us, being the designer, if you like, because we can walk around and understand the space at will. But what happens if we want to guide someone else through this project? What happens if we need to give this to someone or create a rendered view and have them understanding the space? Well, we can't do that very well in Archicad. What we need to be able to do is export that file into another program and, and generally speaking we might be using something like QuickTime to do that. And in order to do that we have to create a, a rendered animation. Now how do we get renders? We get renders through document, creative imaging, photo render projection. And this creates one standard still picture. Now, if we were to create an animation, the two different types that we might be looking at is a sun study. And in a sun study, we're looking at the same view, which is rendered, and the sun is moving around our model. And we'll have a look at that a bit later in a, a later video. And the other type that we might be looking at is an animation, such as a fly-through is what Archicad calls it. And this, in effect, is what we were doing before with the Explore tool, but preset using cameras. A few things more on the 3D window before we continue on to the next video. Let's go back into it. View, 3D, view options, 3D, window settings. Now while we're using the OpenGL for our 3D engine, we're going to be using Cine Render, probably, for our animation. And so the OpenGL version gives us a fairly good representation of what our materials are, but it's not perfect. So we always have to remember that it's not about getting the surfaces to look right in OpenGL, it's about getting the surfaces to look right in Cine Render. And if we don't know what that is, then it probably means we haven't got that done correctly. None of this matters too much for our rendering animation. View, 3D view options, and now this other one here called 3D projection settings. Now this is a little bit complex, but let's try to make it quite simple. We've got two different heights. We've got the height of our camera, and we've got the height of our target. The height of our camera is our height in millimeters from our project zero. So because this house that's modeled is up in the mountains, then it means it's a long way off the ground. And so if we look at an AHD survey level, we see that the surveyor's mark that we have here is 304. So that's 304 meters effectively above sea level. Therefore, our entire Archicad model, if we're modeling well, relates to this height datum, which means that when we cut a section and use auto text dimensions, no matter where I move this, it will adjust automatically. Now I'm getting off 3D, but it's getting to a point. So that means that when we're placing a camera in our model, we can't place a camera at zero like we would a door or a wall or a window or something like that to our story. Because when we place cameras and we find them under more at the bottom of our list, we place a camera relative to project zero not to story zero. And that's because our cameras relate through all stories. They're not fixed to any one particular story. We'll get that, that, get that, get to that in the next video. I just want to have a look at a little bit more before we continue. And it'll probably make sense if I go back into 3D to do this. You can currently see that the entire house front to back is within this window frame. And I might even shrink the window frame just so you know I'm not cheating. Here we go. So the entire house is fitting currently within my window frame. If I go view, 3D view options, 3D projection settings, the other thing that's very, very important to have a look at in here, apart from my camera Z and target Z, is my view cone angle. Now a standard camera is taking a view cone angle of 60 degrees. And what that means is when we're looking at it, we're restricting what we can see. Now we're not zooming in, although that's sort of what it looks like. What we're doing is just having a less angle lens. Or if you like to think about it the other way, if we increase that angle to 70 or 80, we're increasing the angle of our view cone or our wide angle lens. So when you see those real estate photography 
and then you maybe go and visit that house that you've just looked at on real estate or domain or something like that and you get then you go hang on this space looks tiny it's nowhere at all like it looks like in the photo it's because they're often using cleverly chosen angles or maybe even wide angle lenses in order to see the whole space. Now they might be doing that to be deceptive but more likely they're doing it just so they can show you the whole space in one picture. The problem is that while it does show this whole house in one picture, it doesn't give a clear, realistic representation of what it looks like in real life. So therefore, what is our purpose? Is our purpose to show the whole building? Or is our purpose to give a realistic rendering of what it looks like? There's no one answer. Your job might be to provide an artistic impression, and therefore the artistic impression can not necessarily be real. It can be slightly fake. But you need to find a balance between making it so unbelievable that it just doesn't look real, it doesn't look professional, and also so artistically correct that it doesn't just look boring. So we're not going to um, stick to any one particular angle, but just to be a little bit more closer to home, we're going to reduce that down to 70 and work from 70 for the rest of the angles that we're working with. So that's the end of this video. And next we'll have a look at how to place cameras.